the first book of songs of underneath the bow this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by k hand underneath the bow a book of verses by michael field the first book of songs preface for some years my work has been done for the younger generation not yet knocking at the door but awaited with welcome meanwhile readers from further england if they will pardon my so classing them have given me that joy of listening denied to me in my own island and to them i offer this book of lyrics adding such new songs as i count my sweetest to those of the old world series some of which i have reason to hope have one place in their hearts michael field september eighth eighteen ninety eight invocation the apollo in a ring we encompass caroling of the flowers fruits and creatures that thy features do express and by thy side live their life half deified grasshoppers that round thee spring from their mirth no minute sparing hawk and griffin arrow-eyed cock the gracious day declaring olive that can only flourish where the fruiting sunbeams nourish laurel that can never fade that in winter doth incline her lustrous branches to embraid chaplets for the lyric brow the white swan that fair diviner who in death a bliss descrying sings her sweetest notes a-dying these all these to thee we vow we thy nymphs who in a ring dance around thee caroling the first book of songs mortal if thou art beloved life's offences are removed all the fateful things that checked thee hearten hallow and protect thee growest thou mellow what is age tinct on life's illumined page where the purple letters glow deeper painted long ago what is sorrow comfort's prime love's choice indian summer clime sickness thou wilt pray it worse for so blessed balmy nurse and for death when thou art dying twill be love beside thee lying death is lonesome oh how brave shows the foot frequented grave heaven itself is but the casket for love's treasure ere he ask it ere with burning heart he follow piercing through corruption's hollow if thou art beloved oh then fear no grief of mortal men once his feet among the roses when the roses were all white eros wreathed the faint wan posies round zeus's goblet but ere sipping mid the buds his ankle tripping lavished half the vintage bright on the roses that fresh dripping flushed the cup for heaven's lipping and the god's eyes felt delight that the roses were not white but the sweetest of the roses by that fiery rain unfed coyly still her bosom closes still the crimson vesture misses pale mid all the purple this is love thy burning wine drops shed when her blushes make my blisses glowing answer to my kisses in thy triumph be it said that the roses all are red let us wreath the mighty cup then with song we'll lift it up and before we drain the glow of the juice that foams below flowers and cool leaves round the brim let us swell the praise of him who is tyrant of the heart cupid with his flaming dart pride before his face is bowed strength and heedless beauty cowed underneath his fatal wings bend discrowned the heads of kings maidens blanch beneath his eye and its laughing mastery through each land his arrows sound by his fetters all are bound o wind thou hast thy kingdom in the trees and all thy royalties sweep through the land to-day it is mid-june and thou with all thine instruments in tune thine orchestra of heaving fields and heavy swinging fir strikest a lay that doth rehearse her ancient freedom to the universe all other sound in awe repeals its law 
the bird is mute the sea sucks up its waves from rain the burdened clouds refrain to listen to thee in thy leafery thou unconfined lavish large soothing refluent summer wind death men say is like a sea that engulfs mortality treacherous dreadful blindingly full of storm and terror death is like the deep warm sand pleasant when we come to land covering up with tender hand the waves drifted error life's a tortured booming gurge winds of passion strike and urge and transmute to broken surge foam crests of ambition death's a couch of golden ground warm soft permeable mound where from even memory's sound we shall have remission ah eros doth not always smite with cruel shining dart whose bitter point with sudden might rends the unhappy heart not thus forever purple stained and sore with steely touch else were its living foundation drained too oft and overmuch or it sometimes the boy will deign sweep the shaft's feathered end and friendship rises without pain where the white plumes descend who hath ever given cupid's head white hair or hath put our roses under the snow's care if such a fool there be will cry him god's mercy sometimes i do dispatch my heart among the graves to dwell apart on some the tablets are erased some earthquake tumbled some defaced and some that have forgotten lain a fall of tears makes green again and my brave heart can overtread her brood of hopes her infant dead and pass with quickened footsteps by the headstone of hoar memory till she hath found one swelling mound with just her name writ and beloved from that she cannot be removed down the forest path i fled and following a buzzing bee till he clomb a foxglove red he filled full the nodding cup i stood and i laughed to see then closed it and shut him up till i laughed and set him free i dance i dance another fawn a black one dances on the lawn he moves with me and when i lift my heels his feet directly shift i can't outdance him though i try he dances nimbler than i i toss my head and so does he what tricks he dares to play on me i touch the ivy in my hair ivy he has and finger there the spiteful thing to mock me so i will outdance him ho 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 in the moony break when we laugh and wake and our dance begins violets hang their chins fast asleep while we laugh and leap woodbine leaves above each a tiny dove roost upon the bare winter stems and there peaceful cling while we shout and sing on the rooty earth ferns of april's birth brown and closely furled sleep like squirrels curled warm and still while we frisk our fill hark our ears have caught sound of breath and snort near our beechen tree mixing carelessly sprites away fly as if twere day silence on the ground set the toadstool round of these mortals twain we to talk will deign grave and wise till the morning rise love doth never know why it is beloved and to ask were treason let the wonder grow were its hopes removed were itself disproved by cold reason in its happy season love would be beloved love's wings are wondrous swift when hanging feathers lift why hath love wings great pinions strong of curve his wild desires to serve to swoop on the prey and bear it away love hath wings love's wings are golden soft when dropping from aloft why hath love wings feathers of glistening fleece to soothe with balmy peace and warmth of his breath souls he cherisheth love hath wings love's wings are broad of van stretched for great travels span why hath love wings male of the seabird's might from feeble hearts and slight to lift him forlorn 
to a fastness of scorn love hath wings if the sun our white headlands with flame failed to greet should we deem he would shroud them in shame nay blot the sweet daylight not heaven forgot if soft spring failed the flowers name by name to entreat should we fear she would harden earth's frame her hot breath sweet bloweth not she forgot from my love if no gay token came were it meet to think she had slighted love's claim a not so sweet snappeth not she forgot if a land full of memories and fame at the feet of a tyrant bowed down should we blame a spot so sweet sinneth not it forgot when i grow old i would be bold to ask of heaven this boon like the thin circled and translucent moon that makes intrusion unnoted on the morning sky and with soft eye watches the thousand grassy flowers unfold i would be free without confusion of influence cold to pause and see the flush of youth in its felicity an apple flower i felt my leaves fall free i felt the wind and sun at my heart a honey-bee and life was done a calm in the flitting sky and in the calm a moon a youngling golden mid windy shades an olden oak tree whose branches croon as the orb sails by hi ho youth and age the soft and dry while breezes blow its crooked arm the oak points upward to the moon a sapless member which scorching of november and leaven shafts of june in their season broke heigh ho age is gruff with blight and stroke while breezes blow but storm has left no trace upon the blithe new moon that westward slideth and on the white wind rideth it does not weary soon of the blowing race heigh ho Youth is free and sweet of face while breezes blow. Wind in the Fir Trees Methinks the wind hath spoke aloud. Othello Sweeping, sighing away, over the fir trees gray, Sweeping, grating, sighing away. As one that seeketh not to find, Thou ravest through the pines, O wind across the pines i hear thee rave sick as a madman for his grave and i have caught thee in the west coming from thy prayer unblessed coming from the sun at rest with the tedium in thy cry of a breath that cannot die with the rancor in thy glee of a god who has lost his memory in search of the things that were wont to be grass in spring spring the light is stronger the air is shuddering the sky is smiling through sun clouds that shall be showers and the grass is caught imagining flowers poppy song do you see the poppies coming do you see the poppies come do you see the poppies coming do you hear their seedy hum large poppies of the night in their bands of blue and white poppies fading from my sight as they come dreams on the gray dawn track dreams are hastening back to the years that is why the air is busy that is why the eye grows dizzy as the little ghosts from play speed away to the moldering years in winter sear we little men o the hill no longer duck and peer upon holy daffodil nor suck the egg that the cuckoo lays nor the angry leg of the chafer ring till the gray pate sing with his stiff amaze no 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 to keep ourselves warm in row we run ta la la lo a valley's end is steep and flat at the top no pathways there may wend across the sweet fern crop as dead as straw at the signpost rye all the winds seesaw and with chilly feet we little ones meet on the rim of sky we start stay go and down to the pool below we run ta la la lo through hazels and apples my love i led where the sunshine dapples the strawberry bed 
did we pluck and eat that morn my sweet and back by the alley our path i chose that we might daily by one rare rose did we smell at the heart and then depart a lover who grapples with love doth live where roses and apples have naught to give did i take my way unfed that day say if a gallant rose my bower doth scale higher and higher and though she twine the other side of the pale toward me doth sigh her perfume her damask mouth roses will love the south can i deny her i have a lady loves me in despite of bonds that tie her and bid her honest corin's flame requite when i espy her kisses are near their birth love cannot live in dearth say shall i fly her this rare south rose that thou didst take and send to me across the snows bidding me wear it for thy sake o oh, deem me not unkind i cannot wear it for thy sake for it has opened me the wild daybreak and scented all the wind in pastum's seven petalled rose my thirst i slake or warm my senses in a secret bower of inmost persia beauty has such power she cannot keep a bond but doth decree love in her affluent presence free ah me if i grew sweet to man it was but as a rose that can no longer keep the breath that heaves and swells among its folded leaves the pressing fragrance would unclose the flower and i became a rose that unimpeachable and fair planted an odor in the air no art i used men's love to draw i lived but by my being's law as roses are by heaven designed to bring the honey to the wind i found there is a scant sun in spring i found the blast a riving thing yet even ruined roses can no other than be sweet to man where winds abound and fields are hilly shy daffodilly looks down on the ground rose cones of larch are just beginning though oaks are spinning no oak leaves in march springs at the core the boughs are sappy good to be happy so long long before end of the first book of songs the second book of songs of underneath the bow this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jason in Panama. Underneath the Bow, a book of verses by Michael Field, the second book of songs. Slowly we disarray, our leaves grow few, few on the bow and many on the sod round him no ruining autumn tempest blew gathered on genial day he fills fresh as apollo's bay the hand of god i stood to hear that bold sentence of grit and mould earth to earth they thrust on his coffin dust stones struck against his grave oh the old days the brave just with a pebble's fall gravedigger you turn all bliss to be reaving to catch the cleaving of a trope as fine shears would less hurt human ears live senses that death dooms for friendship in dear rooms slow lighting faces hand clasps embraces ashes on ashes grind oh poor lips left behind mortality turns round on mortals in that sound ears are for the knell of a muffled bell touch for clods of earth sight for torture and dearth others may drag at memory's fetter may turn for comfort to the vow of mortal breath i hold it better to learn if verily and how love knits me with the loved one now others for solace sleep forsaken may muse upon the days of old to me it is delight to waken to find my dead to feel them fold my heart and for its dross give gold bring me life of fickle breath bring me death 
summon every hope's alloy gather round me what doth most love to boast that it can our bliss deflower there is now no mortal power that can feed upon my joy every terror is overthrown i have found the magic stone for a dead heart is my own henceforth is it not pure gold to grow old let the hours of parting fleet while to think of what befell is to dwell at the mouth of the honeycomb where the soul bee hath its home where the soul bee hives its sweet and the heaven to come at last bravely may i now forecast since i hold the loved one fast ah me how sadder than to say farewell it is to meet dreading that love hath lost his spell and changed his sweet i would we were again to part with that full heart the hawthorn was half bud half flower at our good-bye and braver to me since that hour are earth and sky my god it were too poor a thing to meet this spring our hearts life never would have marged to bear their tides their confluent rush lo death is large in boundary sides and our great Kyrie must be said when i am dead death for all thy grasping stealth thou dost convey lands to us of broadest wealth that stretch away where the sunshine hath no foil past the verge of our dark soil past the rim where clouds uncoil mourners whom thine avarice dooms once given a space in thy kingdom past the tombs with open face see the smallness of our skies large until a mortal dies and shrinks them to created size o oh, the freedom that doth spread when life is shown the great countries that the dead have thrown open where at our best leisure we with a spirit may walk free from terrestrial poverty little latisse is dead they say the brown sweet child that rolled in the hay ah where shall we find her for the neighbors pass to the pretty lass in a linen sarah cloth to wind her if her sister were set to search the nettle green nook beside the church and the way were shown her through the coffin gate to her dead playmate she would fly too frighted to own her should she come at a noonday call ah stealthily stealthily with no footfall and no laughing chatter to her mother twere worse than a barren curse that her own little wench should pat her little latisse is dead and gone the stream by her garden wanders on through the rushes wider she fretted to know how its bright drops grow on the hills but no hand would guide her little latisse is dead and lost her willow tree boughs by storm are tossed oh the swimming sallows where she crouched to find the nest of the wind like a water fowls in the shallows little latisse is out of sight the river bed and the breeze are bright ay me were it sinning to dream that she knows where the soft wind rose that her willow branches is thinning little latisse has lost her name slipped away from our praise and our blame let not love pursue her but conceive her free where the bright drops be on the hills and no longer rue her i would not have the wind pass by i would not have it rave i would not have the wind draw nigh that whistled o'er his grave i would not have the rain beat round i would not hear the rain there is no comfort in the sound no comfort for us twain but i would have the snow drift high and to my house roof cling so for a night at least we lie beneath one covering solitary death make me thine own and let us wander the bare fields together yea thou and i alone roving in unembittered unison for ever i will not harry thy treasure graves i do not ask at thy still hands a lover my heart within me craves to travel till we twain time's wilderness discover to sojourn with thee my soul was bred and i the courtly sights of life refusing 
to the wide shadows fled and mused upon thee often as i fell amusing escaped from chaos thy mother night in her maiden breast a burthen that awed her by cavern waters white drew thee her firstborn her unfathered offspring toward her on dewy plats near twilight dingle she oft to see thee from men's sobs and curses in thine ears a tingle pours her cool charms her weird reviving chaunt rehearses though mortals menace thee or elude and from thy confines break in swift transgression thou for thyself art sued of me i claim thy cloudy pearlius my possession to a lone fresh water where the sea stirs the silver flux of the reeds and willows come thou and beckon me to lie in the lull of the sand sequestered billows then take the life i have called my own and to the liquid universe deliver loosening my spirit's zone wrap round me as thy limbs the wind the light the river come meet me out my loneliness o wind for i would know how far the living who must stay behind are from the dead who go eternal passer-by i feel there is in thee a stir a strength to span the yawning distances from her gravestone to her i by spells had been beguiled to a marish country wild where a lonely-hearted child crossed me and i felt she knew all the way she wandered through though the reeds around her blew and the dusk was in her rear as i watched her disappear mid the flitting umbrage drear the halcyon o love o bitter mortal journeying by ways that are not told i would not sing no song is sweet to me now thou art gone but would ah would i were the halcyon that sea-blue spurred of spring so should i bring fair sister companies of fleetest wing to bear thee on thou being old with an untroubled heart to carry thee safe o'er the ridges of the wearying sea i would not die to meet a goodly company i was ever ever shy and have loved to live retired that i might con some mystery scarce pondered on oh this i have desired no hope to brood where harpers wing on wing intrude or bold saints with trumpets rude where four beasts from turning ein watch my strange ways but in concealment of deep rays may some recess be mine i never can on earth though quite escaped from man put society under ban buzzing bees swing in a flower gnats drum and dance the weasel intercepts my trance birds warble through a bower once chloe graced my suit how fondly we embraced still my arm was round her waist chloe dropped her pretty head upon my knee and love was left alone with me just while she slumbered and once i lay in sickness i had swooned away for i wandered as at play it was untethered innocence not of my own i had the night was open thrown sound wrought no more offence endowed by thee death let me enter privacy unmorose and fellowly to mix with the free pleasure of stars and springs and magic unfamiliar things my beauteous leisure they buried him ah i have not thought it is thirteen years ago whether the years have been long or short i shall never know only my heart cries out with tears to go to him in his grave to go to the long long years she mingled me rue and roses and i found my bliss complete the roses are gone but the rue lives on the bitter that lived with the sweet life will mingle you rue and roses the roses will fall at your feet but deep in the rue that their leaves bestrew the bitter will smell of the sweet when thou to death fond one wouldst fain be starting i did not pray that thou shouldst stay alone i lay and dreamed and wept and watched thee on thy way but now thou dost return yea after parting 
and me embrace our souls and lace ask thou no grace thou shalt be i confined to this place alone alone i lie ah bitter smarting thou to the last didst cling kiss fast yet art thou passed beyond me in the hollow of a blast there is a fair white relic in my room god how i love it twine twine green keys of sycamine round and above it then lay it softly in my heart's new tomb ah morning friends these sullen sighs and deep no longer breathe me sing sing praise of the royal thing death doth bequeath me and carve me in my memory to keep vain death thou hast no staying thou dost not lag behind dear life in thy decaying an innocent thou dost claim my dahlia's frame but this corruption that men call thy praying is love that blows thee to the wind winds to-day are large and free winds to-day are westerly from the land they seem to blow whence the sap begins to flow and the dimpled light to spread from the country of the dead ah it is a wild sweet land where the coming may is planned where such influences throb as our frosts can never rob of their triumph when they bound through the tree and from the ground great within me is my soul great to journey to its goal to the country of the dead for the kernel tips are red and a passion rich in strife drives me toward the home of life oh to keep the spring with them who have flushed the kernel stem who imagine at its source all the year's delicious course then express wind and light something of their rapture's height unconsciousness he with the gentle ones is hid from sight we may not follow he hath dwelt with woes so dread he lays his confidence in those men shrink from who remember and requite oh comfort him sweet daughters of the night for fear of whom man's thought doth softly tread within your grove let him be deeply led to reconciliation and repose thanatos thy praise i sing thou immortal youthful king glorious offerings i will bring for men say thou hast no shrine and i find thou art divine as no other god thy rage doth preserve the golden age what we blame is thy delay cut the flowers ere they decay come we would not derogate age and nipping pains we hate take us at our best estate while the head burns with the crown in the battle strike us down at the bride feast do not think from thy summons we should shrink we would give our latest kiss to a life still warm with bliss come and take us to thy train of dead maidens on the plain where white lilies have no stain take us to the youths that thou lovest to choose of fervid brow unto whom thy dreaded name hath been simply known as fame with these unpolluted things be our endless revelings End of the Second Book of Songs The Third Book of Songs of Underneath the Bow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kay Hand Underneath the Bow, a Book of Verses by Michael Field the third book of songs when high zeus first peopled earth as sages say all were children of one birth helpless nurslings doves and bees tended their soft infancies hand to hand they tossed the ball and none smiled to see the play nor stood aside in pride and pleasure of their youthful day then all waxed gray morning in companies the winter dearth what e'er they saw befall their neighbors they felt in themselves so lay on life a pall 
zeus at the confusion smiled and said from hence man by change must be beguiled age with royalties of death childhood sweeter than its breath will be one if we provide generations difference wisely he planned the tiny hand in eld's weak palm found providence and each through influence of things beholden and not born grew mild youths by the old man's side their turbulence to crystal sense saw clarified dear is not the story's truth most manifest had our lives been twined forsooth we had never had one heart by time set a space apart we are bound by such close ties none can tell of either breast the native sigh who try to learn with whom the muse is guest how sovereignly i'm blessed to see and smell the rose of my own youth in thee how pleasant lies my life at rest from dream its hope expressed before mine eyes methinks my love to thee doth grow and this is the sign i see the spirit claim thee and do not blame thee nor break intrusive on the holy ground where thou of god art found i watch the fire leap up and do not bring fresh water from the spring to keep it from up flaming higher than my chilled hands require for cherishing i see thy soul turn to her hidden grot and follow not content thou shouldst prefer to be with her the heavenly muse than ever find in me best company so brave my love is grown i joy to find thee sought by some great thought and am content alone to eat life's common fare while thou prepare to be my royal moment's guest live to the best archeron thou must not leave me though tis a mournful land through which i travel i will but guide thee hand in hand to mysteries thou must in art unravel when thou a little way art gone ere the grove's steep descent darkening can grieve thee thou backward to the sweet stars shall be sent while i plod on to acheron it was deep april and the morn shakespeare was born the world was on us pressing sore my love and i took hands and swore against the world to be poets and lovers evermore to laugh and dream on Letha's shore to sing to charon in his boat heartening the timid souls afloat of judgment never to take heed but to those fast locked souls to speed who never from apollo fled who spent no hour among the dead continually with them to dwell indifferent to heaven and hell tis men ideas tis di of dacrion vian envelopon pare huse apollo and the muses taught thee not thy mighty strain enchantment to the mind thralling the heart by spell of holy fears awful thou soutest aaron's sacred grot and the eternal goddess well inclined hath given thee songs for the dull life of tears there comes a change in her breath a change that saith she is breathing in her sleep breathing breathing and yet so low o life at ebb o life at flow her life her breath a girl her soul a deep wave pearl dim lucent of all lovely mysteries a face flowered for heart's ease a brow's grace soft as seas seen through faint forest trees a mouth the lips apart like aspen leaflets trembling in the breeze from her tempestuous heart such and our souls so knit i leave a page half writ the work begun will be to heaven's conception done if she come to it our myrtle is in flower behold love's power the glorious stamens crowded force unfurled cirque beyond cirque at breathing bee-like and harmonious work the rose patched petals backward curled falling away to let fecundity have perfect play 
o flower dear to the eyes of aphrodite rise as she at once to bear audacious bliss and bid us near your prodigal delicious hemisphere where thousand kisses breed the kiss that fills the room with languor of an acid dark perfume forsaking have you seen the olives at set of sun how their fiery maze that tossed him his sparkles snatched his rays becomes a region of limitless grays dead bough on bough for lack of the sun love this is how living would be if thy life were run leave me not thou a prayer she lies asleep i watching do not dare pray for her dole or bliss give the sweet face whatever being there thou needst must kiss sweet briar in rose so sweet all sweet the body as the shire sweet senses and the spirit sweet as those for me the fragrance of a whole sweet briar beside the rose metrum praxile stream and pool mine is the eddying foam and the broken current thine the serene flowing tide the unshattered rhythm light touches me on the surface with glints of sunshine dives in thy bosom disclosing a mystic river ruffling the wind takes the crest of my waves resurgent stretches his pinions at poise on thy even ripples what is my song but the tumult of chafing forces what is thy silence beloved but enchanted music metrum praxiliae eyes sweet of my poet how sweet are the eyes the eyelids open as clear to the sun as the flowers of noontide honeyed the light they secure in their shaded amber filling the sense with the desire to inhale their fragrance linger and feast at their brink as at brink of roses power in silence one though i sing high and chaunt above her praising my girl it were not right to reckon her the poorer lover she does not love me less for her royal jewelled speechlessness she is the sapphire she the light the music in the pearl two not from pert birds we learn the springtide from open sky what speaks to us closer than far distances that hide in woods what is more dear than a cherry bough bees feeding near in the soft proffered blooms lo i am fed and honored thus three she has the star's own pulse its throbbing is a quick light she is a dove my soul draws to its breast her sobbing is for the warm dark there in the heat of her wings i would not care my close housed bird should take her flight to magnify our love daybreak shall there ever be a morn i might breathe beside her and yet choose to wake forlorn and yet choose to wake in death eros while my love has breath i will breathe beside her constancy i am pure i am pure i am pure i love her with the seasons with the winds as the stars worship as anemones shudder in secret for the sun as bees buzz round an open flower in all kinds my love is perfect and in each she finds herself the goal then why intent to tease and rob her delicate spirit of its ease hastes she to range me with inconstant minds if she should die if i were left at large on earth without her i on earth the same quick mortal with a thousand cries her spell she fears would break and i confront the charge as sorrowing and as careless of my frame as christ intact before the infidel end of the third book of songs the fourth book of songs under the bow this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Underneath the Bow, a book of verses by Michael Field. The Fourth Book of Songs. The Table of the Fourth Book. 1. A Shady Silence Fills. 2. 
the iris was yellow the moon was pale three in winter afternoons are short four a valley of oak trees five she was a royal lady born six leda was weary of her state the crown was heavy on her head seven ah how beautiful is youth the fourth book of songs a shady silence fills at deep mid eventide the rockless land of hills where two slow rivers glide the gnats beneath the gloom have failed in song yet something through the coombe comes like a sound along though very far as yet though no one is in sight nor could a mortal set such alien echoes moving through the night tis not an hour to fear the sun has gone to bed the clouds from dusk are clear and there are overhead but one or two large stars a bat or two yet hark a jangle mars the peaceful mountain view like the far cry of hounds chasing a distant prey the chime of yelping sounds oh will it sink or will it swell this way it comes as the wind with little noise at first exultantly combined halloos and bays outburst upon that solitude where two streams meet then in a scramble rude of shoulders ears and feet the bayhounds rush along and drive before their jaws a wincing naked throng at flight from heated breath and thorny claws these are the souls that moan because upon their birth god's water was not thrown are those who left the earth impenitent unblessed now all must fly while summer is at rest and hunted furiously be caught and bitten through by dogs of fairy breed sleek creatures ebon blue with lusting teeth and foreordained speed they scour the mountain side the upland township then skirt the dark valley wide a cloud of dogs and men behind tall ladies race each dressed in green each with a smile at face and presence of a queen who breathe from steely lips clap when a soul is caught and urge with corded whips the stragglers of the pack to fiendish sport their dogs have ceased to whine the whining does not cease one cannot watch the kind that chew their cut in peace for still the lengthy curs it almost seems phantasmal haunt the firs haunt the two voiceless streams the sprites themselves have ghosts that it is hard to lay and echoes walk in hosts long after the live echoes pass away the iris was yellow the moon was pale and the air it was stiller than snow there was even light through the veil but a vaporous sheet clung about my feet and i dared no further go i had passed the pond i could see the stile the path was plain for more than a mile yet i dared no further go the iris beds shone in my face when wist i a noiseless music began to blow a music that moved through the mist that had not begun that would never be done with that music i must go and i found myself in the heart of the tune wheeling round to the whir of the moon with the sheets of mist below in my hands how warm were the little hands strange little hands that i did not know i did not think of the elven bands nor of anything in that whirling ring here a cock began to crow the little hands dropped that had clung so tight and i saw again by the pale dawn light the iris heads in a row a ballad in winter afternoons are short it was a winter afternoon the milking was already done i took my man i took my gun that we might have some sport we stooped behind the tallest brake there was a bush of golden firs the firs has scent so rich and full it makes the sense a little dull i hardly felt awake oh could it be the whir of game that sudden little spring of noise robin was shouting in the wind he must have left me far behind so faint his whistle came i felt the bushes with my hand there was a certain furrowed nook the gorse with fire was black and brown but there the music drew me down into a clear white land there was more grass than i could see the grass was marked with pale green rings and oh the sudden joy i felt to see them dancing at full pelt the whole fair family 
we did not touch the pale green rings i think we eddied through the air a swirl of dew was in my face and looking downward i could trace the mark of pale green rings the measure scarcely was begun i could have danced a hundred years but robin he would surely scoff straightway i broke the measure off my eyes blinked in the sun if robin should be come to harm i looked for him to left to right in winter afternoons are short it was too late to think of sport i turned back to the farm my mother all the tale should know how thick the trees above the hedge there was a pond that i must pass i looked in it as in a glass my hair was white as snow the servants saw me pass and smiled but that was not the worst for when i looked in at the parlor door the children rose up from the floor i had no wife or child they gathered round me in a flock the mistress jeered but who was he that old man with the bald bent head oh he would know had i been dead he would not feel the shock his master was away from home he said and rose to give me food but my old master has been lost these fifty years a terror crossed his breast and he was dumb i could not touch the wheat and bread so plain i saw the clear white land cursed cursed elfin race mid living men i have no place and yet i am not dead i travel on from town to town but always by a dusty road by market streets by booths and fairs i have great terror of the snares upon the furzy down but i must see my home once more nor fear to eat the wheaten bread oh some day i must see my friend and eat with him and make an end for robin is fourscore a valley of oak trees a streamlet between them as twisted as these few mortals have seen them or crossed the low bridge from oak ridge to oak ridge why is there a bridge where no one can heed it or traveller need it small bridge between oak trees the triads have homesteads and cousins and neighbors a dryad who weds with a fawn often labors to reach her own folk in some far away oak for she loves the old folk of the glade where she tarried before she was married and then on the bridge she treads or one who with boldness is wooed by a satyr her sandals will press on the boards with a patter of leaves in the wind and looking behind half scared by the wind her face coy and simple she hides mid her wimple and runs in her floating dress thus often and sweetly the bridge hath united hath helped those who fly hath brought the invited and sped the late guest from east and from west past lover and guest while the bridge is unbroken in the countryside oaken and dryads and fawns live by a ballad she was a royal lady born who loved a shepherd lad to bring the smile into his face was all the care she had his murderers brought a bloody crook to show her of their deed she eyed it with a queenly eye and leapt into the mead there she settled with the lambs and felt their woolly fleece it was their cry among the hills that brought her to her peace and when at night she folded them outside the wattle fold she took her lute and sang to them to keep them from the cold she was a happy innocent whom men had sought to spite alack no sovereign lady lives a life of such delight for no one crossed her any more or sought to bend her will she watched the ewes at lambing time and in the winter chill and when her flock was gathered far one day beside the brook the shepherds found that she had died her arms about her crook she had no memories to forget nor any signs to weep O oh God, that I might be like her, and live among the sheep. Leda was wearied of her state. The crown was heavy on her head. She put the crown away, and ran down to the river bed for a whole holiday. She came to draw free lonely breaths beside the mellow autumn pools, counting their starry drops. She mused on the lone God who rules above the mountain tops. And as she worshipped him with secret heart, 
among the willow trees she felt how something sailed and gathered round her as a breeze the breath within her failed there were white feathers on her breast when she awoke the water stirred with motion of white wings and in her ear that note she heard the swan a dying sings triumph of bacchus and ariadne from lorenzo de medici quantel belle giovanessa ah how beautiful is youth youth that fleets so fast away he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay this is bacchus we are seeing ariadne how they glow always happy and agreeing since tis plain that nothing matters while they love each other so and these others nymphs and satyrs dance beside them all the way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay see these little fawns a bubble with pure mischief muse and plot how to get the nymphs in trouble and a thousand traps have baited mid the bushes in the grot now by bacchus's heat elated they are skipping all the way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay and the tricksome nymphs discover it is nice to be pursued caught and worried by a lover who should frown at love's ensnaring were a thankless creature rude so they mingle pleasure sharing making gamble all the way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay on an ass selenus hoary rides with all his flesh and years drunken steeped in bacchic glory at his figure's backward swaying he is foremost in his jeers and at whiles in snatches singing with the others cheer the way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay this is midas as they tell us all he touches turns to gold but his gift scarce makes us jealous for what good is there in treasure treasure more than man can hold if he cannot take his pleasure being thirsty all the way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay now all ears be set a tingle open quick to every bliss young and old together mingle young nor old possess the morrow tis to-day we meet and kiss we must drop our grief for sorrow would pollute this holy way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay youth and maiden swell in chorus in our hearts how warm and sweet thus to feel the gods are for us loving music loving dances merry with our moving feet let misfortune as it chances strike across us in our way he who would be gay forsooth let him hasten to be gay ah how beautiful is youth youth that fleets so fast away end of the fourth book of songs the fifth book of songs of underneath the bow this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sonia. Underneath the Bow, a book of verses by Michael Field. The Fifth Book of Songs Apollo's Triumph She fled from love, her suit was granted. Daphne was changed into a laurel tree, but after with so keen a zest she panted to yield her sweets and in despair cast such engrossing odours through the air apollo breathing them had all he wanted vintage a land of riotous harvest and of sweat a land where men pull down the boughs to get plump clusters and then ravage them a land where some coarse mystery breeds that must expand a festival as ominous as fate a holiday that will not satiate such laughter as must leap up to a creed more clusters and more crushings and more speed pressure of bubbling fruit on open lips squashing and spurts and juicy fingertips for this sun-smothered champagne were accursed should Bacchus pass with glazing eyes athirst.
a nightingale wakes me think of this while she sings so loud a woman is lying in her shroud to whom a lover has never vowed o oh, wrong in the world and by god allowed ah me a girl to be dead and miss that high and away that clang of pain the way love trebles his sweets again and then feels it vain jar jar and keeps to the mocking strain two lovers came of many a common thing we talked then in a ring drew toward the hearth the winter daylight died and she was at his side he took he stroked her hand that we might know it is just so love loves the cadence of our talk grew low the fire shot forth a brand then we forgot the lovers for the room was filling with a doom the pressure of a presence that we felt had power with them that dwelt in many a distant land and with the dead no word we said but in a stupor watched the firelight shed glow on the fondled hand marionettes we met after a year i shall never forget how odd it was for our eyes to meet for we had to repeat in our glances the words that we had said in days when as our lashes lifted or drooped the universe was shifted we had not closed with the past then why did the sense come over us as a fetter that all we did speaking eye to eye had been done before and so much better i think but there's no saying what made us so hateful was the rage of our souls at finding ourselves a stage where marionettes were playing for a great actor once had trod those boards and played the god as two fair vessels side by side no bond had tied our floating peace we thought that it would never cease but like swan creatures we should always glide and this is love we sighed as two grim vessels side by side through wind and tide war grappled us with bond as strong as death and thus we drove on mortally allied and this is hate we cried an aeolian harp dost thou not hear amid dun lonely hills far off a melancholy music shrills as for a joy that no fruition fills who live in that far country of the wind the unclaimed hopes the powers but half divined the shy heroic passions of mankind and all are young in those reverberant bands none marshals them no mellow voice commands they whirl and eddy as the shifting sands there there is ruin and no ivy clings there pass the mourners for untimely things there breaks the stricken cry of crownless kings but ever and anon there spreads a boom of wonder through the air a reigning doom with ineffectual plaint as from a tomb a train that traverses europe's central plain thousands of miles through the moulded furrows twinkling in sunset as night grows brown a power comes down stretches its wings on the infinite plain strains to the earth one bows to its rain and prays and prays through the thousand furrows for a heart subdued to the heart of that infinite solitude a supposition the tips of the hills rise up like curled waves on the verge from gallow hill rim on rim what a wide round world the man to be hanged must have looked on till it closed up tight in the grip of the noose to think that just on a day like this harvest in valley sun profuse some six of one's fellows should deprive a soul of the joy of being alive and watching the sun and the mountains kiss 
but what if his captors after all were balked of putting their men in thrall and just when they choked him eye and breath their victim was sailing out clear to death no longer to blink in the flashing sun to be in the light in the very run and reach past the mountain's curling rim if while the troopers were burying him with thought of hell and the judgment grim he was stretching his limbs from life's fetter curse to rest in the golden universe unbosoming the love that breeds in my heart for thee as the iris is full brimful of seeds and all that it flowered for among the reeds is packed in a thousand vermilion beads that push and riot and squeeze and clip till they burst the sides of the silver scrip and at last we see what the bloom with its tremulous bowery fold of zephyr petal at heart did hold so my breast is rent with the burthen and strain of its great content for the summer of fragrance and sighs is dead the harvest secret is burning red and i would give thee after my kind the final issues of heart and mind noon full summer and at noon from a waste bed convolvulus musk mellow poppies spread the triumph of the sunshine overhead blue on refulgent ash trees lies the heat it tingles on the hedgerows the young wheat sleeps warm in golden verdure at my feet the pale sweet grasses of the hayfield blink the heath moors as the bees of honey drink suck the deep bosom of the day to think of all that beauty by the light defined none shares my vision sharply on my mind presses the sorrow fern and flower are blind your rose is dead they said the grand mogul for so her splendour exceeded masterful it seemed her due by dominant male titles to commend her but i her lover knew that myriad coloured blackness wrought with fire was woman to the rage of my desire my rose was dead she lay against the sulphur lemon and blush grey of younger blooms transformed morose her shrivelling petals gathered round her close and where before coils twisted thickest at her core a round black hollow it had come to pass hints of tobacco leather brass confounded gave her texture and her colour i watched her as i watched her growing duller majestic in recession from flesh to mould my rose is dead i echo the confession and they pass to pluck another while i drawn on to vague prodigious pleasure fondle my treasure o oh, sweet let death prevail upon you as your nervous outlines thicken and totter as your crimson stale i feel fresh rhythms quicken fresh music follows you corrupt grow old drop inwardly to ashes smother your burning spices and entoil my senses till you sink a clod of fragrant soil the depth of the grass look in the early light down to the infinite depth at the deep grass roots where the sun shoots in golden veins as looking through a clear pool one sees it do where campion drifts its bladders iris brinded through the rifts of rising falling seed that the winds lightly scour down to the matted earth where over and over again crowsfoot and clover and pink bindweed dimly steadily flower july there is a month between the swath and sheaf when grass is gone and corn still grassy when limes are massy with hanging leaf and pollen-coloured blooms whereon bees are voices we can hear 
so hugely dumb this silent month of the attaining year the white-faced roses slowly disappear from field and hedgerow and no more flowers come earth lies in strain of powers too terrible for flowers and would we know her burthen we must go forth from the vale and ere the sunstroke slacken stand at a moorland's edge and gaze across the hush and blaze of the clear burning verdant summer bracken for in that silver flame is writ july's own name the ineffectual numbed sweet of passion at its heat the lady i have vowed to paint has contour of a rose no rigid shadow of a saint upon the wall she throws her tints so softly lie against the air they almost vie with the sea's outline smooth against the sky to those whom damask hues beguile her praise i do not speak i find her colour in the smile warm on her warm blonde cheek then to the eyes away it spreads those eyes of mystic grey that with mirage of their own vision play her hair about her brow burns bright her tresses are the gold that in a missal keeps the light solemn and pure behold her lashes glimmerings have the dove's secret springs of amber sunshine when she spreads her wings we meet i cannot look up i hear he hopes that the rainy fog will clear with a flushing cheek i hope it may and at last i seek his eyes oh to greet such skies the delicate violet thunder grey behind a spirit at mortal play who cares that the fog should roll away i have found her power from her roving eyes just a gift of blue that away she threw as a girl may throw a flower i am weary of glances this blue enhances my life i have found her power one branch a branch of wild rose buds in sunny studs of orange red flecked by the warm diffused violet flowers breathing a breath transfused as if with showers of the first dew that fell when all things done were well irises in a vase of gold and scarlet how cold the flicker of wrinkled grace in this iris sheaf my eyes fill with wonder at the tossed moist light at the withered scales under and among the uncertain sprays the wavings of white on the cloudy light and the finger marks of pearl the facets of crystal the golden feather the way that the petals fold over together the way that the buds unfurl tiger lilies lilies are you come i quail before you as your buds upswell it is the miracle of fire and sculpture in your brazen urns that strikes me dumb fire of midsummer that burns and as it passes flinging rich sparkles on its own clear blaze wreathes with the wreathing tongues and rays great tiger lilies of your deep cleft masses it is the wonder i am laid under by the firm heaves and over tumbling edges of your liberal leaves cyclamens they are terribly white there is snow on the ground and the moon on the snow at night the sky is cut by the winter light yet i who have all these things in ken am struck to the heart by the chiselled white of this handful of cyclamen i live in the world for his sake for the eyes that sleep and wake i live in the world for his eyes earth's kingdoms may pass away i heed not these things of clay but i live i love i pray from the light of his eyes to a cuckoo heard in early morning i hear thine iterating voice in flight cuckoo 
while every wood bird's song is furled to rise like thee to take my range of light and spread unravished echoes through the world february gay lucidity not yet sunshine in the air tingling secrets hidden everywhere each at watch for each sap within the hillside beach not a leaf to see stars at dawn stars at break of day rushing to your rhythmic play round the sun so far away pray for me as ye dance and bound skimming the sky with a lovely sound pray for me as in a ring to the crystal light you sing that the image of your glee may at heart give peace to me touching the land his ship has touched the land what curses rise in my heart to feel him there his ship is sailing on to verses of lyric passion and of prayer life was a rose a rose to me through which the lucid blood flowed free through which the sunlight slanted the inner circle was a flower enchanted and that some enemy has rifled from the core i smell my rose no more the zest of the intricacy is gone and the wide leaves flower on renewal as the young phoenix duteous to his sire lifts in his beak the creature he has been and laying over the coarse broad vents for screen bears it to solitudes erects a pyre and soon as it is wasted by the fire grides with disdainful claw the ashes clean then spreading unencumbered wings serene mounts to the ether with renewed desire so joyously i lift myself above the life i buried in hot flames to-day the flames themselves are dead and i can range alone through the untarnished sky i love and trust myself as from the grave one may to the enchanting miracles of change End of the Fifth Book of Songs End of Underneath the Bow, a book of verses by Michael Field